Let's talk about probabilities with or. And as we're doing that, we're going to also talk about what it means to be mutually exclusive or not. I'm Angie. Let's dive in with this first example. We're going to draw a single marble and we want to know what the probability is of drawing either a blue marble or a red marble. Now, when we're putting our formula together, the first thing that we need to decide is, are these two events connected? Does one depend on the other or are they completely separate? Well, if I draw a blue marble, that's totally separate than drawing a red marble. There's no way that I can draw a single marble and have it be blue and red at the same time. That means that our two events are mutually exclusive and we get to use this form of the OR formula. It's the probability of A or B. Think of this as cases, is the probability of A plus the probability of B. We wanna dive in and do the math here. We've got six yellow, five blue, four red for a total of 15. So as I do the probability, it's gonna be blue or red. And I know that I wanna add those two probabilities together plus the probability of red. So this is equal to, now I'm using favorable outcomes in the numerator out of total outcomes in the denominator. So when I go for that blue probability, there are 15 marbles total and there are five blue marbles in that jar. Okay, so that's one way or I would have been happy with a red marble as well. So or, so we're gonna add that together. This is also out of 15 marbles. There are four red marbles. Now the way that I actually like to think of this is as a single fraction with favorable outcomes over total outcomes. How many of these marbles would I be happy with? I would be happy with any of the five blue or the four red out of the 15. So we get nine out of 15, which reduces to three fifths. Let's take a look at an example where they're not mutually exclusive. So now we're gonna draw a card from just a regular old deck of cards. And I wanna know what the probability is of getting either a heart or an ace. Now I've got my four aces down there, but in a standard deck of cards, there are 13 hearts along with those four aces, but take a look. Do you see that duplicate? There is an ace of hearts that's actually counted in both groups. This is our duplicate, which means that these two events are not mutually exclusive. I can draw a card that's both a heart and an ace. So my formula looks a little bit different. The probability of A or B, it's still the probability of A plus the probability of B, but what we're subtracting there is actually the duplicate or the duplicates. And that's the probability of A intersect B or the probability of getting both at the same time. Here's what it looks like as we put this one together. So I've got the probability of getting a heart or an ace. So that translates into the formula, probability of getting a heart plus the probability of getting an ace minus those duplicates, the probability of a heart and an ace. Now, as I put this together, I'm gonna to use favorable out of total, and I'm gonna put this together as a single fraction. So I am drawing a single card out of 52. Now it could be a heart, and there are 13 of those. These are my hearts. It could be an ace, that would also be a favorable outcome. There are four of those, but there is one ace of hearts, which is counted in both. So I wanna subtract that duplicate. So as I do the math here, I get 13 plus four, I end up with 16 out of 52 which reduces to our answer of 4 thirteenths. You're gonna also wanna learn about probabilities with and, I've got you covered.